A deadly car accident on I-75 has a dad now looking to 10 investigates for answers. Only on 10 Tampa Bay, Jennifer Titus has the latest installment in her series, Unguarded. A 2,500 mile trip from San Diego to this Tampa hotel room. Stuart Payne says he'll go the distance to find answers for his daughter, Jada. Something just kept telling me that there's something wrong with this accident. Jada was not a reckless person. Yes, ma'am, how are you doing? I'd like to report an accident. Everything is mangled, ma'am. Okay. Oh, Do you see something? I mean, it's mangled that bad. I do have a call in the system for vehicle versus guardrail. The name is Jada Payne. J-A-I-C-A, Payne, P-A-Y-N-E. Tell me about your daughter, Jada. Jada, from the time she was a little child, she ran track and she always made friends. She was a loyal friend. Uh, she was ambitious. The phone call came about 7.30 in the morning and all I could hear was my wife screaming. Uh, so I run out and it was chaos. He says the chaos hasn't stopped. Contacting every agency involved in investigating his daughter's accident has been chaos in the search for answers. Something just wasn't adding up. Red flags just kept going up. And we initially thought that the accident happened on an embankment. We didn't know that it happened at a guardrail. No one shared that. Payne says it wasn't until three months later when he started going through the reports from Florida Highway Patrol and the Hillsborough County Medical Examiner that he started to understand what had happened. But it was these photos obtained by 10 investigates that showed Payne for the first time the mangled chaos that happened the morning of January 5th. Jada's car unrecognizable. Her headrest in one photo was lying on the ground. The guardrail sheared the roof off the car. And none of that detail is in the homicide report. For months, 10 Investigates has been investigating improperly installed guardrails. It's why Stewart reached out to us and made the trip here to Tampa. But what we've learned about this guardrail involved in Jada's crash is that it was under construction at the time, and experts we spoke to believe it was also unprotected. You can see in these side-by-side -side photos that on the concrete pad today, there is guardrail with an end cushion. But on the night of the crash, there's nothing on the concrete pad that looks to have just been freshly poured. So that's probably what happened there. They were waiting for it to cure uh, before they could install a crash cushion. A crash cushion is a device put on the end of a guardrail that's designed to protect drivers and absorb energy in a crash. But in the interim, they needed to install something that could actually do something in the event that someone went off the road there. What they did instead was they left a, a few blunt ends pointed back at the oncoming vehicles. And blunt ends are obviously very dangerous. And the only thing protecting cars and trucks? The barrel does nothing. It's just plastic. Uh, your car against hollow, empty plastic barrels is it's a no, yeah, it's a non-starter. We've learned there are measures that can be put in place like this device you see here. It's a truck attenuator. Through a public records request, 10 investigates scoured through dozens of documents related to the night of the crash and why construction was going on in the first place. It shows another crash that happened at the same exact spot, a car hitting the guardrail December 21st. A construction crew was repairing the damaged guardrail when they wrote in this email from December 23rd, our mobile attenuator is parked in this location as we schedule mobilization. Can we extend this to January 6th? The concrete pad will take 72 hours to cure and we will need closure set up to perform some of this work. Four days later, FDOT approved the request and for the project to be completed on January 6th. Then the company emails FDOT after Jada's crash saying they will leave both attenuator trucks throughout the duration of the project they now have to fix. They have photos of them up immediately after the December 21st crash, but photos from the morning of Jada's crash do not show a truck attenuator in place. When we send crews out on the highways to do this work, we put something up to protect the crews so they're not injured. 
they can't just leave a guardrail incomplete, as it appears in this case, to exist without protecting the drivers from hitting that. Payne's fight for answers began on January 5th. A fight, he says, isn't over yet. Right is right, wrong is wrong. We've got to do something to keep our daughter's memory alive. And if we can stop one death from these guardrails, then that would be a success. I want to let you know we did reach out to the Florida Department of Transportation looking for answers about this crash. We'll let you know as soon as we learn more.